First of all, hey girl, you must have one section in your room with for earrings or a whole room. Yeah. Yeah. You have those yeah, jealous I like, earrings. I like earrings and I like rings as well. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. <laughs> Listen, um, because I can't Skype and you stream at the same time and going back and forth, I think you answered some of the questions. Yeah. And by the way, your introduction as usual was beautiful. Oh, nice. <laughs> but because I didn't hear the whole thing, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Is there such a state of unconditional love? Yes, but it's not anybody's state and it's not a feeling. You can also have these bliss love experiences where, um, where it feels like the area around the heart open up and everything dissolves into to love. Um, and you can, um, yeah, there could be many experiences with sensation of love. Um, and then there is unconditional love, which is everything, but it doesn't manifest through a human's behavior. The human is set up to be a human. So the human is, you, you won't find it in human behavior. Like you can't have a human that's, that, ha that expresses in their behaviors unconditional love because the human set up to survive and it won't ever do that and a lot of spirituality implies that the human will be like that but what can happen in the human body is there can be a movement from being that separate entity that body which is um, moving to survive and always um, uh, yeah, growing to that stillness uh, which is everything and that's the unconditional love, but it won't it won't manifest as behaviors. It's it's not about the behavior of the person. It's not about you having unconditional love and loving people unconditionally as a human. It's seeing that unconditional was always here, and everything was always bathed in that unconditional love, even when the human is being selfish or the human is. Um, not sharing or shouting or angry or sad or feeling rejected. There's always been unconditional love everywhere and it's nature of life. But you won't find it in one particular thing. The human often gets stuck in looking for that unconditional love in things. So it will look for it in a guru, it will look for it in uh, the image of God. Relationships. In relationships. It will expect someone to love them unconditionally and it's impossible really because the human's set up to survive it's like a tree we we will do really beautiful things as humans because we're set up to live as a group so you will get acts of people you know, uh, um, dying for other people like giving up their life for other people but that's in the bounds of of being in a human group that's what humans will do for each other but that doesn't imply oneness in in that way or it doesn't imply unconditional love because also the person that doesn't do it is also unconditional love the person that doesn't give up its life for somebody else and just stands back or runs away, that also is unconditional love. There's nothing outside of unconditional love. So even things that we see on the news and hear on the news on some level, it's unconditional love? Yeah, yeah, it is. Everything, everything, all the bad things, the good things. And when the mind stops, when the, the human stops believing that it is the separate entity and it stops judging the world as good and bad and stop seeing the world is good and bad, then then there will be nothing that was rejected, including what humans define as bad. It will be okay. seen that nothing was ever at risk, really, ultimately. It doesn't mean that so, human doesn't try and save things or help things, but ultimately nothing was ever lost. So this whole thing, I mean, you know, I've been through different teachings, etc. This thing about projecting and, you know, what you see outside is really something to pro project it, that you projected that's all irrelevant it's all just happening yeah it's all it's all kind of uh, irrelevant it is all happening this sort of teaching though might um, make you a more um, stable and balanced human and mm -hmm. the the illusion that's projected inwards will also be projected outwards so in a way there is like so if you see yourself as a victim then you will always see perpetrators out there. That's part of the way the separate self works. You know, if you want, if the the person wants to, if the illusion of self keeps repeating that it's a victim and it's hard done by, and that it's had a bad life, then it needs to see perpetrators everywhere. But in a way, that doesn't need to be fixed or changed. 
the mm -hmm. movement that happens is that isn't the experiencer mm -hmm. that person that believes it's the victim that person that believes it's been hurt by things isn't the experiencer that is an experience and even when that's happening there is a stillness in it all there is a freedom in it all there is still everything experiencing that mm -hmm. In that, so, as that, there is the freedom, not in changing it, not in stopping having projections. Projections happen with, with, with the ability to think. And there can be projections right. even when there's no identity. But mm. knowing about projecting onto other people mm. might, like we were talking about a few weeks ago, make the person happier because <laughs> it might stop um, acting out some of its really weird behaviours. Um, so it might make it more relaxed and more happy, but that's not waking up. Waking up is seeing the stillness in all the projections, the freedom while all the projections are happening. And it's always here in everything. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And that person that, oh. that projects isn't the one that wakes up. That is happening in this. Uh -huh. It's happening in, in everything. But that's not the experiencer, that's not you, that is an experience. So who's the experiencer? And that is everything. And, and there lies God. There lies freedom. If you look for it in the projections or in the separate self, it will be an endless cycle. So you said there is God, so there is such a whatever would we call God, source, universe, I mean, what is... I know, and we will never, the thing about God, he's, it's a very intelligent or, I mean, even calling intelligent is in our world, but God is everything, but God isn't found in this world, so we can never see God in this world, we can never pull it out and go, this is God, this is more God. God is invisible, it is everything, every, one, every last thing is made up of, of God, but, but the when we look inside of everything, we can never actually find God. We can't okay. we can't find the Creator as a thing in this world. It's not a thing in this world, yet it is the whole world. Okay. Okay. I love the word God, but a lot of people don't like it because of the uh, conditioning and Christianity. Yeah. But I love it, and it yeah. we'll never be able to look at God. Um, and never be able to see God, but yet it is all it. This is God experiencing itself in everything. And God doesn't have a judgment, so so he's not judging, or she's not judging, or it's not judging the world it's creating. It doesn't have the ability to judge. It creates judging. And um, yeah. and there, therefore we have this, this is bad, this is sad, this this is horrible, how could God do this? But God is creating spontaneously and isn't working like we see things in time, like a human. Mm -hmm. And the other thing which is a little different then, but, but these were all teachings that I was kind of linking up with. And Well, let me just ask a question. Thought, the thoughts and actions of prosperity and abundance <laughs> Um, from what I'm understanding, that isn't even really relevant. It's not right? relevant to, no, it's not relevant to non-duality at all. It's like talking about money or talking about McDonald's. But mm -hmm. um, a human mm -hmm. being that's having more thoughts of prosperity and abundancy will most probably be more happy. Mm -hmm. So that might, those teachings might make the person happier. But yeah. it's, it's not any more non-dual than anything else. But right. that might lead to a happier life. If you've had a person that's, had, that's got really negative thinking, if their thinking changed to a bit more positive thinking, it might be a, a nicer experience. Right. And then the life might be more abundant. If the thoughts are on that, the life might be more abundant. It might not be. Um, but yeah. it, it's... It's not to do with non-duality, well, that's about the person being happy. It's just happier. what is happening, either yeah. or. Yeah, it's just what's happening. And some speakers, they say that the person's got to be happier before it can hear non-duality. But I don't understand, I don't know where they find the proof of that. Because, you know, a lot of famous speakers, 
um, this happened to, and the, they, they were in deep despair or deep suffering. So I sitting on both benches under the bridge, etc. Before yeah, like Kate, uh, Katie Byron was uh, a drug addict. Um, Eckhart Tolle. So I don't know. I don't. I. I don't know how they know that, but that's what a lot of people say. say. So they teach both simultaneously. They teach making the human happier and non-duality. And often the, the, they aren't too clear about the difference. Um, and I just speak about non-duality because I don't really know so much about therapy. Although I did it, I never, I don't know, I, I don't really know how that, that worked. Like I don't really know how to teach that or speak about that. Right, right. And I don't okay. know if it's it's it, I don't know if it's any relevance or not. Either argument is in uh -huh. is it doesn't really matter. There's just non-duality, which is one. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> it doesn't really matter now yeah. for what I'm hearing. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no me. <laughs> quick. Sorry, I missed that last right. bit. Oh, that again? I just cut out a little bit there. I missed what you said. No. But I appreciate you waiting oh. for the book. Oh, nice. Yeah, hopefully it will come soon. <laughs> okay, darling. Thanks, Jackie. Bye. Bye-bye.